What's up people? Back again with the weightlifting accountant. So today is day seven on the uh, ketogenic diet for myself. It's been a good first week. It's been a tough first week, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but that's all part of the process, right? The first few weeks are the hardest. Um, today I'm just gonna break down how I've gone about my first week so that if any of you are looking for a template to go off, you can use some of the information I'm giving you here as uh, how to do it. I'm also gonna be doing my uh, physique check-in just so you guys can monitor the progress. I have actually lost four kilos this week. I've gone from 94 and a half kilos to 90.6 kilos. Um, now, obviously that's not all fat loss. Uh, I would be surprised if much of it was fat loss. It's uh, predominantly glycogen in the muscles and uh, the water throughout my body that I've flushed out this week. And that's something that you will all experience if you go keto. Um, you'll probably have the runs at some point in the first week. Uh, no, it's not a great thing to talk about, but it is a reality of going on the ketogenic diet. So prepare yourselves for when that happens. Um, my lifts this week also uh, took a bit of a downturn. They were really good at the beginning of the week. And if you uh, check out my training vlog, you'll see at the beginning of the week, I hit a 160 kilo uh, jerk, which is uh, the most I've done in probably six months. So that was great. I also did some really heavy deadlifts. I hit 232 and a half kilos for a set of three. Um, so that was a rep PR for me actually. But towards the end of the week when I was training out with the Zubin team, I uh, couldn't even snatch 110 kilos. So obviously the ketogenic diet took its toll, the low carbs and whatnot, but I'm starting to feel good again. If you check out my training video, my training vlog for next week, you'll notice that some of the videos from uh, today's session, the Sunday session, which will be in that, uh, were not too bad at all. So yeah, starting to get back up again and starting to feel good. So something that uh, you should all be aware of when you're doing the ketogenic diet is that you will have a, uh, I guess, temporary decline in performance. Um, something else that's happened this week, I guess in that first week, I was very hungry for the first couple of days. That's passed now, which really lets me know that I've entered ketosis, my body's burning fat for its energy source, and I'm feeling good again. But yeah, those first one to three days when I, was, when I cut out the carbs, I was, I was very hungry. Um, and that's partly going to be due to the types of foods that I am eating. Uh, I'll give you guys a rundown of what I'm eating. The main foods that I'm eating are vegetables. And those are going to be low carbohydrate vegetables like broccolini, broccoli, asparagus, different types of lettuce, spinach. Um, I am chucking in some tomatoes in there, not too many. I'm chucking in some capsicum as well, some peppers, not too many of those either. But just trying to get as much cruciferous vegetables in and um, really do my body some good in that sense. I am then getting all my protein from either whole eggs, beef, uh, some chicken thigh and some fish. Uh, I also, every day, kangaroo, something for you Aussies out there. It's cheap, it's in the supermarkets, it's great for you. Really high in CLA, conjugated linoleic acid, which uh, has a range of health benefits, but particularly helps in burning fat. So if you're on the ketogenic diet, kangaroo is not a bad meat to go for. It's not very high in overall fat though, so you will have to add in some fats to those meals. Eating a lot of avocados, trying not to eat too many nuts, um, that's something I'm shying away from. Uh, and also tons of coconut oil, tons of olive oil, lots of organic butter. Um, and that's probably why I've been getting a little bit hungrier than previous times. I'm staying clear of as much dairy as I can because dairy, it seems to upset my stomach a bit. And the whole point of going on this ketogenic diet is for me to decrease inflammation, particularly in my stomach. Um, and therefore I feel like going and eating lots of dairy would be counterproductive to why I'm doing this. So not very much dairy for me, lots of oils, lots of butter, um, ghee, a lot of ghee as well, which is a refined butter, uh, typically, typically used in Indian cooking. It's, it's delicious, love it. Uh, Something that I've also done this week to really help get into ketosis is for the last six months, I've been intermittent fasting. It's worked great for me. I feel like I'm able to train really hard during my feeding period uh, because I'm getting a ton of nutrients and a ton of nutrition during that period. 
And then for the rest of the period when I'm sitting at work and not training, I don't eat and it feels great. So when you fast, your body will naturally look to go into ketosis and start breaking down fats for energy because it's not getting carbohydrates and your blood sugar naturally drops down. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm waking up in the morning having a bulletproof coffee. So that is a coffee with 10 grams of uh, grass-fed butter, 10 grams of coconut oil, and sometimes I'm swapping out the butter for MCT oil uh, just to really kickstart that metabolism and, and get my body burning fat and whatnot. And then I don't eat until 1 p.m. that day. So I do have that high fat coffee in the morning, but then I don't eat the rest of the morning until 1 p.m. And I feel like that's helped me get into ketosis quicker. And I really do feel it. It, it, it really has worked better than previous times. Um, and then after that, I'll have my three meals before I train, which is a steak meal, an egg meal, a kangaroo meal, and then I get home after training and I have a protein shake and my fish for dinner. Now, sorry if you could hear crunching in the background, just realized my cat is uh, eating, her, eating her food right next to the camera. She's a little adorable little Bobby. Bobby and Robbie, we've got the same name. So my wife obviously likes the name Bobby or Robbie. Um, so yeah, I've been, uh, eating predominantly oils and, and eating my meals in that sort of fashion. I found it really works. So my ratios at the moment have been 65% of my calories from fat, uh, 25% of my calories from protein and about 10% of my calories from carbohydrates. That 10% from carbohydrates has been all from vegetables and nuts. Now I'm cutting out a lot of the nuts this week to try and bring that down to 5%. That would be ideal, 70% fat, 25% protein, and 5% carbohydrates would be the ideal ratio for me. But at the same time, I, I can feel my body in ketosis. Uh, I'm having 100% of my carbohydrates are fiber, essentially, so I'm not really finding that it's having an impact on me being in ketosis. So as you can see, been good progress so far. Body shape's changed a lot and that's due to dropping a lot of water and inflammation. Feeling good. Um, just looking forward to feeling strong again. Weighing in at 90 kilos is a real benefit for me. It really gives me some flexibility and if I lose a little bit more weight, even more flexibility when the new weight classes come out. Keep tuned because I will be making a new video in July when the IWF does release the new weight classes. Uh, so keep uh, a lookout for that video. It's going to be interesting. I think as an athlete, I'm going to have a really fresh perspective. I train with a lot of people who are really looking forward to it. We've all got a lot to say on it. So keep a lookout for that video. So two things that you want to look out for when you're trying to get into ketosis. The first thing is not to eat too much protein. The ketogenic diet is protein sparing because you're using ketones as a fuel source. You're not trying to um, break down muscle into glycogen for energy. It's not, it's not something that's going to be occurring as high, at, at as high a rate. So you want to drop your protein down because too much protein and too much amino acids can get converted to glycogen and that's going to... Uh, prevent your body from really adapting to the ketogenic diet and fully going into ketosis. Number two would be just for the first week, try to steer clear a little bit from sweeteners. Now, this isn't necessarily because I have a view on how they impact the uh, how they impact insulin, but more because I think that it's good to really try and break that need and that uh, that sort of addiction to sweetness when you're going into a ketogenic diet. And if you do that, you'll start picking up sweet notes and sweet flavors in other foods. And that will really open up your eyes to the benefits and the enjoyment in different foods and not just packing yourself full of sweet sugar flavor the whole time. And also, I find that a lot of the sweeteners that are in Australia, at least, they upset my stomach. And as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm trying to decrease stomach inflammation because I really feel like I need to get my gut health right. Uh, and, and the sweeteners do impact on that. 
If you do need a little sweet fix, a great thing to go for is kombucha. Now, I know kombucha isn't completely carb free, but a lot of the carbohydrates have been fermented and it is great for your gut. It's probably not gonna kick you out of ketosis. So those are my tips for going into your first week of the ketogenic diet. Just remember, it's the first week that's the worst week. It only gets up from here, so stick to it and you'll reap the benefits. Signing out. Come on, let's go.